next presentation will center around how to create a world-class economy leveraging our digital transformation. Now, this is a very important conversation that we must have today. And this will be taken by none other than the country director leading Google's business strategy in West Africa. This woman, this phenomenal woman, was named by Forbes as one of the top 20 power women in Africa by the London Business School as one of the 30 people changing the world and featured in the BBC Africa Power Women series and on CNN Innovative Innovate Africa, beg your pardon. She is an executive leadership coach and a member of the Forbes Coaches Council. Now, she is very passionate about igniting the spark of self-leadership and personal effectiveness as evidenced by her book, The 30 Days of Excellence, which she authored. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me and make welcome a phenomenal woman who continues to inspire several other women and men across the world. Let's make welcome Juliet Ehimwan, Director, Google West Africa, for this next presentation. A warm round of applause for our next presenter. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. So first and foremost, just to uh, appreciate the leadership team of Zenith Bank for putting this together. And I'm very aware that this is the last session before lunch. And so I think we need to make sure that we still have energy in the room. And what I'm going to suggest is a selfie with everyone. I'm going to say Zenith Tech Fair 2.0. And if you can all just say future forward. Does that sound good? Yes. Awesome. Let's see how much energy we can generate. So basically, Ellen DeGeneres has nothing <laughs> on us. So you guys, we need a bit of excitement, guys. So should I give away watches again? We need excitement. Come on, let's go. You ready? Yes. So Zenny Fe Tech Fair 2.0. Future, Future forward. forward. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, um, I'll be talking today about leveraging digital transformation to create a world-class economy. And we've had some great sessions so far in relation to the topic of technology developments and digital. And this is a very exciting time because we've seen a lot of great developments in the digital space. Uh, at the moment, um, the internet economy is projected to contribute $36.5 billion to, the Nigeria, to Nigeria's GDP by 2025. More and more people are coming online. At the moment, we have more than half of the population, over 100 million people online, and about 97% of the people online are using the mobile phone, and I'll talk about that shortly. And we're seeing a lot of developments and uh, enhancements across multiple sectors. If we go to the next slide, please. Now, we heard the group CEO talk about the fact that we can't afford to be pedestrian anymore, and that a lot of the realities around technology advancements are with us today. We also heard Brett talk about you know, some of the developments that we can look forward to or expect in the future. What I'm looking to do in this presentation is to ground those things in the present. Because even today, we're starting to see emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning that used to be very futuristic. We're seeing them being applied today to create solutions solutions to local problems. And I often say that Africa's biggest challenges will not be solved by traditional methods of the past. Technology solutions really provide a way for us to solve these problems a lot faster and more cost effectively. Because today with, your, with the phone, you can, we can solve issues around financial inclusion, 
um, look at, uh, you know, predict climate conditions, detect diseases, and so on. And so it's a really exciting time to be in the technology space and to be looking at some of these developments. Now, before I go into detail, I'm, I'm going to be looking at some of those developments in the, you know, across six sectors. And I'll try to do that very quickly. But before then, I'd like to play a video that just shows the application of machine learning in the healthcare industry. Sound analysis is used in so many fields, such as identification and physics, and identification with the type of based on the sound that they produce. Sound, sound is, is critical, critical to what we're doing, doing because physiological sounds are very, very important in medicine, medicine. But, but the, the traditional, traditional stethoscope has, has changed, changed for close to 200 years. years. The doctor, the doctor is limited, limited by the human, human ear, ear and, and they cannot, they cannot hear specific frequencies. frequencies. This, this method, method is very inaccurate and, and causes a lot of misdiagnosis. Our mission, Our mission is to use machine learning and, and the test flow, flow to, to revolutionize the diagnosis and treatment of respiratory diseases in all of areas, areas such as Sahara and Africa. The Tempo app, app is a powerful screening tool, tool that, that helps, helps doctors, doctors make, make decisions quickly. quickly. The core the technology, technology is trying, trying to mimic the human auditory system. system. Once, Once the patient walks, walks in, the doctor, the doctor collects the lung sounds, sounds with, with symptoms, symptoms, risk factors, and vitals of the patient, and then, and then the tempo app combines all, all that information, information and gives the doctor, the doctor a probability of the patient having, having a specific respiratory disease. Sounds. 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 Eric introduced the TensorFlow to us because, because he felt that, that, that we can we use TensorFlow to, to go to all, all the stages, stages of development to the deployment of our model. model. Our model uses spectrograms. spectrograms. We, we take, take sound, sound data, data from, from the stethoscope and, and convert it into a visual problem, problem that the computer, computer can best identify. We, we have worked with a number of clinics, clinics and, and pathologists and we are able to collect data from 621 patients and then we use that data to build our machine learning model. Once, Once we, we had trained, trained and evaluated our machine learning model, model, we deployed, we deployed it, it on our Tempo app. Tensor Light, Light helps, helps us to perform, perform an inference on our mobile, mobile device, device without, without the need of a connection. connection. So doctors, doctors can, can use, use the Tempo app, app offline without, without connecting, connecting to the cloud. There are there 216 health health facilities, facilities that are using the Tempo app, app and the Tempo device. devices. These clinics are spread out and some are very very rural clinics. It's really a nice, nice project. project. I, 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 can I can listen to the call, call, call plus, plus white sounds. sounds. Then, then when I add the, the clinical call call history, history and other physical, physical information, there's no need for me to test this patient exactly. Miss Bia Diagnosis, which is one of the problems leading to death in Kenya, is really critical. Some people are helping me, showing me even the things that I would have missed in case I had the definition of what I would have missed. Over 2.5 million people die each year because, because of pneumonia, pneumonia as asthma, well as COPD, and all other treatment I believe that, that we can use machine learning, learning in treatment, treatment and management of diseases, respiratory diseases. So that's a classic example of machine learning being used to innovate within the health space. I have shared. Uh, at the last fair, actually, I did share about machine learning being used in cassava farms to automatically detect diseases with cassava plants. Basically, you just point the phone, uh, you take a picture of the leaf, and the app would be able to tell you what the problem is and what the solution is. And that is an application that can be used by you know, subsistence farmers, people that don't necessarily have uh, high technology sophistication. So this is just bringing home the fact that these technologies can just really enhance our daily lives and we're seeing those applications already on a regular basis. And that, a lot of that rides on the innovation that we see with mobile technologies. It might interest you to know that your mobile phone today, a device that fits in your pocket, has more computing power 
than the technology that put a man on the moon in 1969. That is how far technology has advanced. And if we go to the next slide, essentially, this is like a supercomputer in your pocket. And it makes possible a lot of the solutions that we see today as a platform to ride on. So if we go to the next slide, yeah, well, so we're talking about digital transformation and, and the digital economy and the impact on, on life and growth. And I thought it's important to even just create a picture. When we talk about the digital economy, what are we talking about? Because it can be a nebulous concept. So this picture, I think, adequately captures the different elements that we think about with the digital economy. At the core, you have players that contribute, and f contribute to and fuel the economy. So you have digital platforms that people can engage with. You have digital entrepreneurs and developers that are building apps and solutions that people can use to engage uh, with the platforms. Obviously, digital skills are really important to be able to leverage these technologies. Everything rides on digital infrastructure, so broadband connectivity, reliable connectivity, and uh, talking about finance as well, particularly in terms of fueling startup innovation and entrepreneurship. And even in government, and we've heard some of the previous speakers talk about this as well, even in government, increasingly we're seeing digital uh, technology being used in the provision of government services. There's a huge scope for expansion in that space. And of course, the private sector, you know, mobile banking, mobile apps, we've heard about some of the innovations from Zenith Bank, and you know, across the private sector, we're seeing a lot of innovative use of technology to reach the consumer and to provide services. And then uh, just uh, the outer circle really touches on some of the different sectorial applications. Brett, in his presentation, talked about some of these. So for example, with digital transport, uh, uh, today we have the benefit of access to digital maps, for example, Google Maps, that not only provide directions, but also traffic information, which is really sophisticated if you think about it, to be able to get to that level of detail. Uh, we're able to call you know, cars, uh, uh, Uber service, etc. Smart agriculture, I just talked about the example in cassava farms. There are similar examples as well across board and um, you know, a lot of other applications. What I'm looking to do in the, the rest of my time is to just zoom into specific sectors so that we see real practical examples right here in Nigeria of solutions being created in these spaces with the use of technology and also some of the economic realities around that because we know that the fuel of e-commerce or the fuel of commerce can really help accelerate growth because there is a reality around sustenance, etc. And so in talking through these solutions, I would also seek to touch on the opportunities as well, the opportunities in terms of impact, but also just show some of the commercial realities in these spaces. So I'm gonna start with the FinTech sector. There's been, a, you know, there's been quite a bit of uh, conversation about FinTech today. That's uh, a sector that has been very active. We've seen the birth of uh, a number of unicorns in that space. And um, it, it, it'll be interesting you to know that about 63% of all the funding to startups in Nigeria last year was to the FinTech space. Across Africa, we had about $4 billion in investments last year, 1.37 billion out of that was to Nigerian startups, and 63% of that was to uh, the fintech um, companies. What we're seeing, the innovation in this space, the opportunities are enormous. So beyond payments and lending, which would be the most popular services and probably the services a lot of us will default to when we think about that space, we're seeing quite a range of services from applications in health tech, blockchain, which we heard about earlier, savings and investing, neobank, 
uh, you know, like uh, uh, CUDA, digital payments, uh, and, and so on, microfinancing, and so on. And at the moment, we have about 250 fintechs in Nigeria. That may seem like a lot or not, but to put that in context, that is like one fintech to 700,000 Nigerians. In comparison, you have in South Africa, one fintech, sorry, in India, one fintech to 200,000 people. In the US, it's one fintech to 38,000 people. And in, in Europe, it's one fintech to 27,000 people. So that shows that with all the activity, we haven't even scratched the surface. There is such a huge scope and opportunity for more growth, for more advancement. And it's great to see the innovations in the financial space. And, you know, uh, organizations like Zenith Bank have been innovating as well, you know, with mobile banking and lo lots of other services. And this can only grow. The, the, on the other side of this is the fact that these innovations actually impact human life. When we talk about the opportunities, we still have uh, a huge percentage of unbanked population. About 55% of the population is unbanked. And at the moment, over 90% of the solutions uh, and investment is around payments and lending. But when you think about insurance and other uh, um, dimensions, there's still a huge room for growth. Another sector I'll touch on is e-commerce. We've seen a lot of growth in the e-commerce space. Uh, the uh, the e-commerce space is fast starting to look like uh, a Nigerian market where you have a diversity of goods and services from, uh, you know, uh, movies, travel, uh, products, uh, you know, deals, regular, um, you know, products, uh, groceries, jobs as well. Quite a huge range of services in the e-commerce space. And the growth that we've seen has been driven by, uh, you know, a lot of developments that are technology-led. So improvements in payment processing. We just had a panel discussion around, you know, payments and the opportunities and the enhancements. So that also is fueling because obviously an e-commerce industry has to ride on digital payments. Uh, the rise in mobile technology, more and more Nigerians are coming online using mobile. Uh, improved B2B and B2C e-logistics, and of course, the rise of mobile money adoption. Um, there is a projection that the, the total consumer spend is going to, uh, uh, in this space is going to reach $9.8 billion uh, by end of this year. So if we go to the next slide and look at the health industry, so Nigerian health tech startups raised $32.5 billion in 2020, and investment in health tech has been oscillating between the second and the fifth largest funded sector in the last few years. We've seen applications in health tech across a lot of spaces. So from diagnostics to you know, um, public health, maternal health, health insurance, telemedicine, and so on. We know there's a sh uh, shortage of um, you know, doctors relative to the population. And if you think about the rural areas, et cetera, you know, applications around telemedicine, right, riding on the, that can ride on a basic mobile phone can just really help to start to close that gap. And the healthcare market was valued at $15 billion, uh, sorry, yeah, $15 billion in 2018 and is expected to reach $20 billion by next year. So a huge opportunity. Now, we know that there are some challenges in, in Nigeria when we look across board, but what's interesting is that on the flip side of every challenge is opportunity. Those challenges really create opportunity for innovation opportunity for growth and opportunity for, opportunities for commercial success. So as we look at these sectors and look at the applications, we can also start to think about, you know, op opportunities to solve basic problems at scale and innovate in that way uh, for um, commercial success. Uh, another uh, sector I'll talk, uh, talk about is the media and entertainment space. We know that there's a lot of creative energy and creative talent 
in Nigeria and across Africa. We know that there's demand for Nigerian content from movies, music, lifestyle content across the globe, right? And digital platforms are making it possible for this content to be shared with the rest of the world. We're having uh, stars that are created on platforms like YouTube, right? We're having people being able to broadcast themselves and smash geographical boundaries because of the use of technology. At the moment, um, the, this space is projected to exceed $10 billion by 2023. And, you know, with uh, enhanced technologies, like even the advent of uh, 5G technologies, we're likely to see this increase a lot more, you know, streaming services uh, and so on. And today we have a lot of Nigerian artists, actually several Nigerian artists that have over 1 billion views and streams on platforms like YouTube. Now, what's interesting about those views is that they equal revenue, right? We do talk about diversifying our economy. Digital platforms are creating an opportunity to diversify the economy because we're exporting talent, we're exporting culture, we're exporting our creative energy, and these um, platforms are monetized, so you're attracting investment in. And if we go to the next slide, yeah, this slide, so we can see some, some great examples of um, different types of content that Nigerians are creatively putting online, sharing with the rest of the world, and monetizing. You know, from, from music to uh, just sharing travel information. In the top right, we have, you know, recipes, food recipes, um, uh, yeah, education content, news, uh, commentaries, and so on. Just, uh, you know, quite a range of content. Today, we have, um, we've seen a 60% growth in the number of Nigerian uh, channels on YouTube that are attracting a seven-figure income. And we have about 650 channels that have over 100,000 views. Now, of course, um, as I mentioned before, what's important about the views and subscriptions is that it's possible to monetize them. And so that just really shows the expansion in that space and the opportunity. So um, just to speed through, uh, e-mobility and food delivery as well, where, where a lot of room for growth. It's, not, it's by no means uh, fully uh, uh, tapped, the opportunity there. But we're seeing increased de um, development. If we go to the next slide. And also B2B logistics. In the interest of time, I'll just uh, move on to the next slide because I know we have lunch pending. So if we move to the next slide. So we can see that once we get it right in terms of identifying the problem, creating a solution and building a business around that, there is a lot of space for success. There's a lot of interest globally in Nigerian startups and African startups. And we've seen a lot of investment, com investment coming in this direction. And um, one of the things that we talk about as well is just also encouraging a lot more you know, local investments. Nigeria remains the single largest market in Africa and the continent's leading investment destination, which really counts for a lot. If we move to the next slide, just to round up, um, just wanted to mention the fact that uh, digital Accelerate, digital transformation is just really accelerating economic growth and can do more of that. And I talked about 108 million Nigerians online. We have, this is increasing on a daily basis. So imagine when we have the next 25 million Nigerians coming online, the opportunities in different sectors that would be just on the table. So as we go through this tech fair, and I know, you know part of the objective of this fair is to inspire ourselves around you know, the opportunities that technology provides, how we can innovate, learn from one another, learn from the solutions that exist as well, right? So as we go through this, let's really think about how can we be active players and shapers in this digital revolution wave that is ongoing. There, it is a very inclusive space because once you have access to the internet, 
yet. It's like a level playing field. There's, uh, there's no limit to what you can do. We have, at the moment, we have about 84,000 professional developers in Nigeria. Quite a few of them uh, program with TensorFlow, which is machine learning. It's so easy these days, if you have an interest or a passion, for you to self-teach, right, and try your hands out with different things. We have tech hubs. There's just so much infrastructure that we can lean into to just really provide the support that we need to make things happen. And so let's really be inspired as we look around us at the different challenges that also represent opportunities. Let's be inspired. Let's think big about what's possible. We've just heard about, you know, like the unicorns and, uh, you know, the opportunity to scale and the investments that are coming in. So let's think big and then let's take action. The, co uh, the connections we make from this fair in the next two days, let's really leverage them and really take action in making sure that we can innovate and build something great and really ride on this digital revolution that we, we have been talking about. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Juliet. Once again, a round of applause.